I think we've about reached the limits of what we can do uh, with one party. Um, I think we're going to have to involve the other party. Um, you know, we tried. Uh, I voted for it. I would have liked to have kept health care alive that way. I just spoke with the president about this, and I'm still very excited about trying to let people join associations across state lines to buy their insurance. And I think he can act by executive order to do this. We can't move on from health care because Obamacare is a mess. We should be politically horsewhipped if we don't try again. The best idea we haven't even brought up, take all the money under Obamacare and mm -hmm. block grant it back to the states. So there you have it. Republican senators offering some pretty mixed messages about the next steps. As President Trump continues to pressure GOP lawmakers to keep trying to repeal and replace Obamacare. Let's bring in Cabot Phillips, media director for CampusReform.org and former digital director for Marco Rubio's presidential campaign, and Atima Omara, Democratic strategist and former president of the Young Democrats of America. Thank you both for being here today. Thank you. Uh, so to kick things off, we know that many of the lawmakers are starting to shift ahead and to look towards tax reform. But here the president is, is staying on this topic, saying we'd really like to see this get done for the American people. So is health care reform dead, or at least for the time being, Cabot? I think for now, I, w I don't want to use the word dead. I think for now, though, it's time for Republicans to move past health care and go to tax reform, something hmm. that they have a much higher likelihood of passing meaningful reform on. And look, they promised the American people throughout the entire campaign, we're going to give you bold legislation, we're going to give you victories. It's time for a victory. Health care, for the time being, is not something they were able to win on. So I think, though, by passing tax reform, they can use the momentum that they gain with voters and also on the Hill to begin to actually use that momentum to pass uh, uh, Obamacare appeal in the future, but they need to remember the midterms are coming up, and in 2018, if they don't have a meaningful uh, legislative success to point to, it's going to be a problem for them if they want to stay in office. Yeah, and that is one strategy a lot of lawmakers are looking at. They want to be able to have something to crow about as they go forward. Uh, Tima, what do you think? Uh, now there's this effort to reach across the aisle, perhaps reluctantly, and to work with Democrats and to see what happens in committee and these bipartisan meetings. Do you think that's the strategy that could ultimately work? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is one of the things that Senate Democrats have maintained, that there are fixes to be made to the health care bill, whether it's lowering prescription drug costs, uh, costs dealing with cost-sharing um, subsidies, and um, how to make those more permanent or stretch those out and not go month to month. Um, so I think those conversations, that they're absolutely willing to pick up the phone, and, and Democrats, certainly Schumer has indicated you know, the interest, that that's the way that health care can absolutely forward if we go back to governing by committee and not like just one party task force. Absolutely. We played a little sound there from a variety of uh, leaders there on Capitol Hill, among them Senator Rand Paul, who had said uh, perhaps something could be done by the president himself. Do you think that's a strategy that might ultimately pay off, Cabot? I think there are definitely other ways of moving forward with health care repeal and beginning to dismantle Obamacare besides just legislation. We also know that Secretary Price uh, is able to kind of dis begin to dismantle the Obamacare individual mandate with some of the power that he has. And also, you mentioned Rand Paul uh, giving forth some ideas. And also, President Trump himself has the power with some executive orders to begin to make positive changes if the Senate is unable to do it. I am encouraged to see President Trump, and I think a lot of Republicans share that sentiment. They like to see President Trump holding the Senate and the House's uh, feet to the fire, making sure they don't forget about Obamacare repeal. Uh, but there are definitely other avenues. If the Senate won't keep their promise to voters, there are other ways to get meaningful uh, reform passed. You know, health care is so vital to everyone. This is something that really matters. It's not like you can just say, oh, forget it, health care reform, we're just not going to do it. I mean, right, Atima, this literally has to get done for the American people. Somebody He's got to make it happen. Absolutely. And, you know, the thing is, like, the, everybody talks about Trump being sort of the great negotiator, but so far right now all he's doing is, you know, issuing threats to cut off, you know, health care subsidies for the congressmen and the senators and, you know, just kind of throwing mini fits on Twitter. What he really should be doing is showing what a great negotiator he supposedly is and bringing everybody to the table and be like, all right, what do we take on both sides to get this done and we could pass something that actually works for the American people? One of our producers in Washington caught up with uh, the Senate Finance Committee Chair Orrin Hatch, Republican senator from Utah and he was talking about Obamacare saying you know basically let's not talk in terms of repeal uh, we're, we're going to have to replace it what's important when they want to get health care done or at least semi right and agree on it it would be a wonderful time as far as repeal goes who cares about words you know is the, are the semantics you know being so specific about if something is repealed or replaced or fixed or retooled uh, can we move past the semantics and and fit and get to the final product that the, the, the people need Cabot 
This is just a reminder of why people don't trust elected officials and the government as a whole. This is one more example of incompetency. For the last seven years, Republicans in the Senate have promised voters, just get us elected, we'll repeal and replace Obamacare, we'll get it done, trust us. And they made, voters made it happen, and the senators are not keeping their end of the bargain. So whatever you want to say, you know, whether it's the semantics of it or if it's the actions of it, voters are looking at that, and they're going to hold, uh, you know, senators in D.C. accountable, as they should. And let's not let this take away from the fact that Obamacare does need to be replaced still. We can't see the Senate's failure and say, okay, well, we're stuck with Obamacare now. It does need to be repealed. It's going to get worse and worse for Americans as we move forward. But it's about actually getting a conservative plan in place and actually making meaningful changes. Yeah, you both have made a lot of great points. Uh, Cabot Phillips, Atima Omar, thank you for joining me here today. The American people are certainly watching both sides of the aisle. We appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Well, some